to NURFM 103.7. Every second Monday, we talk science with this gentleman. He's from the University of Newcastle Department of Science, uh, Professor John O'Connor. And John, let's just get straight into it today. The doorway effect, this feeling that we, we move from one part of a house or a building to another, and we just seem to lose our memory. Why does our memory do that to us? <laughs> yeah, the, the doorway effect is well known. And I think even more so as you get older. But, is that uh, what it is? Maybe that's what's I, happening to me. Uh, it's maybe something to do with memory and age, I don't know. But it came to prominence after a 2011 study by researchers at the University of Notre Dame. It's pro- it was originally a 2006 study where they forgot where they put it. They <laughs> yeah, left. That's right. They were, went through the door. <laughs> they left the room where they had the, the info. All right. And, and they thought it was actually the act of crossing the threshold that made the difference. You know, your mind just sort of refreshes. And so there was a group at Bond University who decided to test this out, and they used a slightly different method. They used uh, virtual reality. And so people would, through, with you know, virtual reality glasses, would move from one table to the next and there'd be a cone on this one and a cross on that one. And, and sometimes they'd go through, in this virtual world, a sliding door and into another room. And the idea was to work out whether they could remember one thing from one table to the next, what these things were. And they didn't really see the effect. It was it was almost non-existent. So they decided to actually complicate things a bit. And they asked people as they walk on, to count backwards. And when they did that, as they went from one room to the next, they did find a doorway effect, although it wasn't as strong as the, as the group at Notre Dame uh, University. But they did find that as people went from one room to the next, they did forget things. And the reason they think it wasn't quite as strong is because in order to get things to be standard, they made each of the rooms almost identical. You know, in terms of you know, shape and all that. And so they're theorising that what it is is that we effectively com- compartmentalise our minds to an environment. So we're sitting here in the studio. Mm. We have our studio memory working. You tell me, oh, by the way, don't forget to, to sign out when you leave. Uh, all of that sort of gets mixed into this environment. I walk outside. My mind says, oh, you're now, now in the foyer. And it wipes not only the the environmental memory that we have of the, or that I had of the studio, but that one thing that you also asked me to remember. Just that little extra bit because it's it your mind's associating with what is happening in here in this room, even though it's a future instruction. That's in that right. Case. And so, um, of course, this uh, this change of environment is is more than just the threshold. It's actually the room has to be different. You know, the or the environment you're moving from and to. It doesn't have to be a room, but. So, so it gives us then some a guide, a couple of solutions on on how to overcome this problem. One is, don't have individual rooms. <laughs> open <laughs> Big, play open living. Play. Here we are. That's right. The trouble is when you walk out the building. In fact, they do make the point that um, this probably doesn't work. To, it probably doesn't really happen as much in, say, a supermarket or a, a shopping centre, I should say, because, you know, it's all very similar there. But if you went from the shopping centre into the car park where the that's environment where you is get different, it. that's where you'll forget. You know, you've got something on your mind that you've got to go and do it on the way home. Walk out into the car park, it's gone. So, yes, one idea is to have the whole place the same sort of environment. Which is not really um, practical. Not really practical. Mm. The other way to immunise yourself against it is to make sure that you're not counting backwards or doing something mentally the equivalent when you cross the threshold. You're on that one item. In other words, you you become very single-minded. You focus on, I must sign out, I must sign out, or I've got to buy, or I've got to... As you walk from one to the other, because that's the only way that it'll that memory will appear in the new environment and stay there. The trouble is, I'm always too busy thinking about something else. <laughs> True. Of course, there is one other way to try and combat that, John. And I, I go back to my very, very first employer that I had uh, quite some years ago, and he said, "Look, you don't have to remember anything at all except one thing." to write it down. So if you have your pencil <laughs> notepad, oh, I must sign out. If you write that down, you'll be fine. Yes, as long as you remember where you put the pencil and notepad. I've got no idea. <laughs> All right, our Professor of Science, uh, John O'Connor from the University of Newcastle. Thanks, mate. If, uh, we'll catch you in a fortnight if you can remember where to find us, all right? I uh, remember where it is, but I can't remember what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> no idea. 2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.